Welcome to Beyond Limits, empowering coaches and entrepreneurs. I'm Steve Remmert. And I'm Odile Remmert. Get ready for a podcast that challenges everything you thought you knew. We're the founders of the Remmert Method, ready to shake up your mindset. Break through doubts, fears, and limiting beliefs and ignite your true potential. Join us for inspiring conversations and strategies you won't hear anywhere else. This is Beyond Limits, empowering coaches and entrepreneurs. Subscribe now and get ready to redefine what's possible. Today is a topic that I think I know I've definitely struggled with in the past. I think I never have. <laughs> <laughs> this is about setting boundaries and I think the main point that I wanted to make get across mm, today is mm -hmm. that you don't actually need to set boundaries. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you like to stir up a little controversy in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, where we want to get to by the end of this is to explain to you why you don't actually need to set or maintain boundaries. There's a way to mm. be able to achieve what you want to achieve, not have to do what you don't want to do without having to set and maintain boundaries. I think the emphasis there being on setting the boundary. We want to get to that place where we just naturally are well, able to hold. Well, we, we saved that for the end. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So <laughs> just talking about what does it entail or why is this mm -hmm. important? The point is that I think many of us struggle when we've got a lot on our plate. Got So there's different types of boundaries here. The first one is if you are either trying to get a, a business going or you're running a business already, you're trying to move it forward, you're trying to get things done. And then you have people. So whether that's, you know, family, friends, other people, mm -hmm. neighbors, <laughs> clients, whatever, demanding your time or asking you to do things that you don't want to do, or you feel you don't have enough time to do, and you're kind of put on the spot and it's difficult to say no. Now, let's say you, you've got work to do in your business. And so you've set aside a certain time today, let's say to get this stuff done that you need to do in order to move your business forward so you can help people. Then someone calls you and says, hey, can you help me move? Or, you know, can you do this for me? Come out with us, whatever it is. Now, if in that moment you think, mm, okay, well, I could do this tomorrow or later, and it'd be nice to help them out. It'd be nice to help them move. That would feel good. Fantastic. That's fine. You don't need to set any boundaries then because you are making that choice because it feels good. And you're you're thinking intellectually, uh, you're making that decision based on what you can do. If on the other hand, the same situation, that person calls you and says, can you help me move? Or, you know, will you come out with us? And you feel, no, I can't. And, and inside you're feeling torn. You feel bad to say no, or you feel you can't say no, or you feel like you're going to have to do it. Then you have a boundary problem, right? <laughs> so one of the things that I found myself doing in the past was number one, I would do things that I didn't want to do because I couldn't say no. So I would find myself agreeing to things and then mm -hmm. feeling resentful and feeling, oh, I wish I hadn't done this. Uh, why didn't I make another plan or something? I couldn't say mm -hmm. no. The second thing, when I didn't do that, I'm going to be very honest and upfront here. When I wasn't doing things I didn't want to do, I was lying to get out of it. Mm. So I would say I can't because I'm ill or my car broke down or I have to help my mother or something like that, rather than actually just say, I, I'm sorry, I can't or I don't want to or <laughs> whatever. I would lie instead. Yeah. I don't want you hanging out there on your own with that one. You know, <laughs> and, and I engaged in some of those kind of things myself as well. There was almost an automatic feature to that, that it clicked in. You found yourself engaging in being dishonest or creating some kind of an excuse that wasn't real and then feeling bad, bad on top that. of yep. that. It's like, <laughs> why did I do that? And now you've just added that much more Pressure, and, pressure and now I've got to like try to keep the falsehood alive all because mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you know, we'll talk about this in a little bit. At that point, you were doing this and it just didn't seem to make any sense. Why? Mm -hmm. Why can't I just say no? Right, right, um, exactly. And, and some it, people can, right? Some absolutely. People can just say, absolutely. Oh, some no, people. And I think that, you know, we're addressing that behavior 
And I think it's a pretty common thing, mm -hmm. especially for those of us that are in that profession. We're coaches. We're out there wanting to help people. Right. We are just naturally people that want to help. Yeah. And, and that was a point that we were talking about earlier is that people mm -hmm. who are in the business of helping others or people who just like helping others, you know, they, they feel yeah. passionate about helping others. That's their mission. And mm -hmm. people like that can have an even more difficult time of saying no, because we want to be helpful. And then we feel either bad for saying no, we feel guilty, or we're worried that those people will think we don't like them or, you know, so there's a, there's a whole lot of different stuff going on. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be slightly different for, for different people. One of the things that I recognized is that I felt like either I was going to give in and be taken advantage of or do things I didn't want to do, or I had to be very strict, very harsh. I'm not doing that. And and I would get angry or frustrated, mm. even just inside myself, not necessarily to the other person. But it was this thing of, I've got to be, you know, strong. I've got to be strict and I've got to be harsh. And then, no, nope, I'm not putting up with it. Zero tolerance of that kind of thing. And what I realized is that it doesn't have to be where either you are giving in or you're being harsh and stressed mm -hmm. and negative. It can be Ah, oh, I'd love to help, but unfortunately, I can't today. Can we? Can we make it another time? Or I'd love to come out with you. That would be so much fun. But I, I really need to get some stuff done. But the thanks for the invitation. Yeah, yeah, and I, I know for myself that I wasn't necessarily ever in that position of feeling harsh. Again, that background knowing of who I was as a person, and that you, you shouldn't be this way. And there's all of these kind of background things that set up this self-image of, I couldn't be that way to other people. And I know that in an earlier iteration of my business, the, uh, another business that I was involved in, I would regularly, uh, people would be coming in and asking me to do things. And I would be under a strict timeline to get something done, get a, you know, get a project finished up for a client. And I would feel this need that I had to just cave in or I had to accommodate them. And it was a free job or something that these were asking me to do. And I couldn't just be able in that space to have the power that, or being empowered enough to respect my own time, respect what I needed in that moment to be able to say, no, oh, could we do this another day? There was just this innate feeling that if I said no, something bad was going to happen. Right. Yes, absolutely. And, and we don't necessarily know what that bad thing is. And that brings me to the other point we wanted to make is that being taken advantage of or setting boundaries can also be financial and doing things for free, people asking for things for free or for a discount, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I wanted to say about the knock-on effects. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you aren't able to have those boundaries, then how difficult will it be to move your business forward? What people won't be helped by you if you aren't able to move your business forward because you're unable to set those boundaries or, or have those boundaries? So moving on to the main point I wanted to make about this is that what would it be like if you were able to, instead of feeling torn, instead of being either you've got to give in or you've got to upset people or, you know, that that resistance to being able to say no or feeling like you have, you get angry and all of that. What it, would it be like if you were able to just say, oh, I'm so sorry. I would, I would love to help, but unfortunately I can't. Is there something else you can do or do you have any other options or that kind of thing? Or, or even just, I'm sorry, I'd love to, but I can't. And not feel stress. So you just feel normal. And what we know is that what's making the difference between someone who can do that, who can just say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. And someone who can't do that feels frustrated, feels angry, feels like they have to be harsh or gives in is the self-image, the unconscious self-image that the brain is referring to. The great news is that that self-image can be changed. And that's a much bigger topic that we do go into in our free masterclass. The link is in the description, so you can watch that. It's only about half an hour. So you, you can watch that for all the details on what self-image is, how the brain is referring to it, how it works, and how to change it, which is the great news. And then, with a different self-image, you automatically feel 
confident and calm and kind. You can you can set those boundaries. It's not really even setting boundaries. You don't have to consciously set any boundaries. You will just automatically say naturally and, oh, I'm so sorry, but unfortunately I can't. So you can do it with kindness and compassion. Yeah. And if we have a minute here, just to kind of talk about experience, I know that I probably had that lifelong pattern. And now we have a a little bit better understanding of what that was. That was that unconscious bit, that self-image that was running in the background that kept driving this inability to set good boundaries. Now on the backside of that, what it feels like to be in a space of feeling that sense of empowerment and being able to really feel that it's like, I can be in that place of respecting myself and I can honestly and authentically let people know what I feel like I need in that moment, what the business, you know, what we need to be doing right now in the moment and not to feel the old drive, that old pain or that fear that something bad was going to happen if I didn't just cave in or if I didn't say yes to whatever, but to be able to actually tell people what it is that I need in the moment and to be able to respect that in myself. And I think that has changed everything. And it's allowed me to be more effective in, in what we're doing in the business because that part of my brain that was always living in that place of fear of what what are other people going to be thinking or you know that, that I'm living in this state of not having those good or healthy boundaries i'm now in a place of being able to have that sense of empowerment and that's moving everything forward right right exactly and and i no longer need to lie <laughs> To to get out of things, to answer that original thing, which was you don't need to set boundaries because if you've changed your self-image, the boundaries are already there. So the boundaries come with the different self-image and they're authentic, they're natural. You don't need to set them actively or consciously and you don't need to enforce them. Yeah, it's not that we don't have boundaries. It's that we don't need to feel like you're actively setting them. And And that feels incredibly empowering. Very good. Again, if you want to spend a little bit more time diving into what those things are that have created that self-image or that need to kind of have that dysfunctional relationship with setting boundaries, then check out the masterclass. Thanks for tuning in to Beyond Limits, empowering coaches and entrepreneurs. We hope you found this episode enlightening, inspiring, and helpful. And if you did, please do consider leaving us a five-star review so that others can benefit as well. Subscribe for more inspiration and strategies to fuel your success. For more information on working with us, visit our website. TheRemmertMethod.com That's Remmert, R-E-M-M-E-R-T, TheRemmertMethod.com Sending you love and encouragement. Until next time.